My head feels very funny. Oh dear, said Dougal. Dougal. Like, I'm not angry at this movie, I'm baffled. Like, a major company, the Weinstein Company, put this in theaters. Anyone seen Pimp My Boat? A movie that I can only describe as broken, in theaters, advertised with major stars from the Weinstein Company. Off the top of my head, I don't know what movies they've made, but that logo is recognizable enough to seem important. Up until now, I thought Monsters Incorporated was a documentary on the Weinsteins, but... <laughs> So what's a Dougal? An internet search engine cartoons used to avoid trademarks? No. Let's take a journey back to 1963 with the premiere of a stop-motion TV series entitled The Magical Roundabout. A roundabout? <sighs> roundabout. Featuring a dog named Dougal, and that's all I know. It was more popular in Europe as it didn't have much exposure in America. Roundabout's one of those European things Americans don't recognize, like that stupid cowboy or the two ambiguous Viking guys. According to a video by Jamboriki, this preschool show had an audience of teens and adults who thought it looked like it was made by stoners, much like your Adventure Time, Powerpuff Girls, My Little Pony, but in the 60s. That'll teach him, said Zebedee. Uh. Dougal tried hard to rub the mixture off on some leaves, but it was no good. 42 years later in 2005 was a CG reboot based on the series for a UK audience entitled Sprung, the Magical Roundabout. It follows Dougal releasing an evil wizard from a carousel. He and his friends set out to collect three crystals to stop him somehow. Soon this whole crazy trip will be behind us. Behind us! That's what I said, man. The Magic Roundabout. <laughs> For no reason, the Weinstein Company felt this movie based on a cartoon no one in America knows about could be successful in the US. Oh, but it's not enough to bring this movie overseas as is. They retitled it Dougal, then recasted, rewrote, re-recorded nearly the entire movie that was already in English. They also gave it celebrity voices, had several minutes cut out the film, and added nothing but constant fart and or pop culture references, the two of which might as well be indistinguishable. I know Kung Fu, John Woo, Judo, Kendo, Taekwondo, Wu-Tang Clan, and uh, Chai Tea. They included a narrator which adds nothing but to explain stuff the audience can see for themselves. I guess to make it seem like it was a fairy tale. They even gave characters that never spoke nor had mouth movements a voice, like this moose played by Kevin Smith. Oh right, on the Blue Man Group's back in town. <laughs> Two words, sir. Personal hygiene. I thought he was speaking without moving his lips since, well, as a movie re-recorded, no one's mouth movements match. I thought he was talking out loud like everyone else, but he's actually just thinking out loud so only us, the audience, can hear and no one else. God forbid a movie have 10 seconds without someone talking. Mercifully, the moose's mouth never moves, so I didn't have to worry about trying to sync up or anything like that, so I, it's just kind of free association, just throwing stuff out there. Mmm, <laughs> hors d'oeuvres. Um, I think the only thing about Dougal that I don't dig is the fact that I think I probably weigh more than the moose. Why did they do all this? Well, blame Shrek. Come. The Hollywood formula is you make one good movie, a thousand knockoffs emerge with a formula. Here being the mix of fairy tales, pop culture references, and a celebrity cast. Featuring Chevy Chase, Judy Dench, Jimmy Fallon, Whoopi Goldberg, William H. Macy, Ian McKellen, Kevin Smith, and Jon Stewart. Dougal. Look, here's a list of celebrities. Surely you have to watch it now, please? The celebrities reel in the adults when kids don't know who these people are, but there's one brand name in the trailer kids will recognize. I didn't know they were shooting Ice Age 2 up in here. From the creator of The Fairly Odd Parents. That's right, Butch Hartman. Don't be fooled, he just helped rewrite the movie. There ain't nothing in here resembling The Fairly Odd Parents. It really does feel like an executive forced him to shove in as many references as possible. Imagine a YouTube parody like Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridge, except not funny and written by a corporation, or the Weinstein Company in this case. Harvey Weinstein called and said, <laughs> uh, do this film. And I fear him as most do, 
And I said, yes. Please don't hurt me. Occasionally, it can be funny, but those occasional laughs aren't enough for 90 minutes. It gets to the point where it's just naming stuff. This movie has the wit and charm of a Deadpool cosplayer found in a small town anime convention who voted for Harambe in the election for the sake of getting three likes on Facebook. It's gone. Oh. Someone's been watching CSI. To do this review justice, I watched both the European and American version of this film. But for now, let's focus on the American cut and find out why Dougal is the eighth worst cartoon ever in no particular order. It's choosing jam time. <laughs> Dougal takes place in a magical land narrated by Judy Dench. Reminder, the original version had no narration. Can you imagine a faraway land where everybody is the best of friends? No, because if everyone is everyone's best friend, we'd be living in a communist friendship society and I just plain don't like that. How would marriage even work? Polygamy? No, sir. Good luck with your top 8 on MySpace. Now, the narration is pointless as we barely get any characterization. All we know is Dougal belongs to some girl. He's also a mischievous little dog who will flatten a working man's snack cart so he can steal food. But jumping onto this cart kicks off the plot. Now, there's something you need to know about this carousel. It was magical, and it had something dark and dangerous locked inside. We are only seven minutes in and already act two kicks in. All of a sudden, this carousel that has not been mentioned until now was harboring an evil spirit. Like a basic movie has a three act structure. Let's discuss the three act structure in storytelling. The most basic of storytelling. Act 1 is the setup. We learn about the characters, what's a typical day for them, how they relate to one another, what problems they deal with, and if there's a supernatural force in the story, they usually foreshadow a warning about the mystical object, but that object does nothing for now. Act 2 is confrontation, usually starts 20-40 minutes in. Said magical object's evil should kick in, starting the real plot. Dios mío, es Dios. Then Act 3 is the resolution, the ending. Example. Gremlins, hey, here's a cute creature. Don't feed it after midnight. Okay. You fed it after midnight, didn't you? Dougal instead decides, here's a carousel. It's cursed. Wait, what? Bye. Huh? Wait, what? Huh? Now, this evil wizard, Zbad, is running amok, planning to create eternal winter, and Dougal's owner is trapped in a frozen roundabout. For help, Dougal summons Zebedee, a red version of that wizard who's a good guy. Is he the hero going to save the day? Nah. Dougal and his friends must venture out to collect some magical crystals, which will stop Zbad somehow. You'd think Zebedee, a friggin' wizard voiced by Ian McKellen, would be a little more useful. Florence, we'll find those diamonds and get you out of there. I promise. Hey, we're trapped in here too. What about us? So how does the release of an evil wizard correlate to collecting three crystals scattered across the land? It's because the plot says so. Now we're off to find the crystals. Dougal knew that if he didn't find them, he might never see Florence again. Well, you could see her again even if you fail, but she'll just be frozen. Hey, remember that one magic school bus episode in space? Classic. Now, we know Dougal, but who are his friends? I don't know. Maybe they should have introduced them in the first act. Their only defining feature besides appearance is making pop culture references every single one. Got milk? <laughs> I don't see them as anything more than the celebrities they're played by. I guess it's perfect casting when this reference spewing rabbit is played by Mr. Laughs at his own jokes, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon's ad libs are just hysterical. Yeah. It's just, yeah, just saying as many references as you can. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, this is the only guitar riff I know. Uh, the, uh, the Olsen Twins. I play this in all my songs. This is the slow version. Sing it, all right. Slide it out. Let them hear you in the cheap seats, dude. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Just throwing out things. Is that all right? That's <laughs> right. It's like throw 99 things at the wall and see what sticks. You do 100 different line readings and like, you know, two of them will be great. And then mercifully, nobody will ever hear the other 98 and, and hear how unfunny you really are.
Nightfall comes as our heroes rest for the night, but not after they bond with some singing by Whoopi Goldberg. Me say hey, oh, say hey. Oh. Look out! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. So her singing can crack ice. Why doesn't she sing near the ice containing the girl? But the ice is probably magical or something. The whole group is sleeping for the night, except for Dougal. He alone decides to raid the villain's lair, only to get caught and tortured by a minion who doesn't know how to torture. Uh, look, this torture stuff's a bit new to me, so uh, what is it you're most afraid of? Oh, uh, hmm. How will he torture Dougal? I can't stand 27? it! 27? Oh. You've eaten 27 caramels already! You'll have to make me eat 100 before I tell you anything! Caramel? Oh no, Dougal! Dogs can't eat that! Don't do this! You have so little to live for! Worry not, his friends are here to rescue him. That's if Z-Bad doesn't catch them in the act. Don't ever touch my girlfriend again! <laughs> Oh, uh, I guess the slug and cow are dating. Would have made that act of bravery a little more meaningful had they established their relationship in the beginning of the film. Dougal's friends escape until Zebad catches up with them. So Dougal summons the good red wizard, Zebedee, to face off against his polar opposite. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> it's here where we find out Zebedee has fire powers, but why didn't he just melt the ice the girl was trapped in? Though, again, it's probably just magical ice that can't be melted. They continue to fight and wait a second. The blue and red. The springs. Oh no. Did Nintendo rip off Dougal? Find out on Game Theory. You know, the Nintendo game with all the springy arms called Arms is such a generic name, but this film has proposed what I feel is the perfect title. You know, there can only be one spring to rule them all. And I am the Lord of the Springs. All in favor of that retitle say I. You know what? Fuck y'all. The battle is halted when the evil blue wizard has been knocked the fuck out. They're safe for now, and the red wizard recognizes the minion. Sam, stop! <laughs> Think about what you're doing! But I've got a job now. I'm not just a fixture on a merry-go-round. I'm a soldier. You may wear a soldier's uniform, Sam. It's what's inside that counts. Apparently, they have an emotional connection together. You know, maybe instead of telling us about them having a connection, they could have shown it at the beginning of the film. Zebedee, look out! Uh-oh, looks like Zebedee is distracted long enough to get ass blasted from behind. Get the diamond! Yes! It's kind of a Lord of the Rings with fur, I guess you could say. So back on the plot, the first emerald is in a volcano, but Zebad gets it first and destroys the one bridge out of there. I guess now we'll take the time to have some character building with the slug and the cow. I must look like a walking handbag. Oh no, Ermintrude, I think you look... That is, I find you... Look, in case we don't make it out of here, I just want you to know that... Hey, anyone need a lift? Wait, they're already in a relationship. Why is he struggling to confess his feelings? Weren't they? Or was the slug saying she was his girlfriend supposed to be like a Freudian slip? You know, like, she's my girlfriend, or I mean my friend. I guess that's what it was. How is the audience supposed to know if the first time we hear of this relationship is the slug stating the cow is his girlfriend? How are we supposed to know that's not his girlfriend? Again, we don't know who these characters are and what's their relationship. The film is beautiful. The animation is beautiful. The sequences, the action sequences are very exciting. And um, the characters are really well made and they're really likable. Okay, so I heard about this technique from the show Flapjack. The way they came up with weird background character designs is they fold the paper three ways. One person draws the head, covers it. Another person draws the body, covers it. A third person draws the legs. Together, they make one goofy ass character. 
This movie feels like they did just that with the script. Nothing is coherent or established. They just throw things into the story. God damn. But next, they escape the cave by making a hot air balloon with tents. They don't show them making it, we're told this by the narrator. For story convenience, the bad guys make it to the following area containing the second diamond shortly after the heroes do. Someone could get hurt walking through here. What was that? Maybe it's the only other characters in the film. The heroes make it inside the temple first and find a throne room containing the diamond somewhere. But where? Oh hell no. Dougal, in all his brilliance, pops on a throne and clicks a button, activating a security system, revealing the diamond. Cool light show. Very Pink Floyd. No! They're alarm beams. Okay, I'm trying to figure this out here. This throne room is mostly just one big room with a throne in the middle. You push the button in the middle, it reveals the diamond from hiding, yet it activates a bunch of lasers to surround the exposed diamond. But the lasers don't slice anyone, they're the ones that make an alarm sound when touched. They're alarm beams. So, for security, someone is just supposed to sit in the middle of the throne room and can't leave. Wouldn't the diamond be more protected in hiding? Why have the security alert beams if someone has to be sitting at the center of the room to activate and deactivate them. I'm standing in a room and can't leave. I would know if someone enters the room. It doesn't make any sense. But they're so close to the diamond, yet Dougal fucks it all up with both his chewing gum and terrible lip syncing. Sweet move. That was great. No! no! Johnny. Bring out your dead! Pirates of the Caribbean. Hey, I thought we said no Disney jokes. <laughs> I fucking hate this shit. <laughs> <laughs> they get the second diamond and escape via train, only to crash. One diamond left to find, and it's revealed it was back home where they started. Their one friend who is a living train is damaged and it can't go any further, so they leave him behind to die. Dougal and the gang keep moving forward, but get lost in the snow. <gasps> but hold on, are there tracks? Who could they belong to? I prefer the term gliding. Oh man, they're ours! Oh wait, shame on me for expecting this movie to be able to afford rendering more characters. It turns out they've been circling the whole time. Our heroes have given up on saving the world, but Dougal can't give up. Not when his owner is trapped. No, we can't give up now. We're close. Florence! Hey, what happened to all the fog? <laughs> it's in this shot, next shot, gone. Nice. It's over. As much as Dougal wants to help, he and his friends ran out of energy and pass out from the cold, chilling them to death. But they wake up the next morning and they're fine. Yeah, they're fine. Falling asleep, freezing to death? Nah, there was no danger. They just needed a nap. Remember that sad Pokemon episode, Snow Way Out, where Ash was trapped in a cave and had to survive a night in the cold with his Pokemon? You win. Guess we'll all be cold together. Yeah, Ash just needed to train himself to stay up past midnight for New Year's. He was never in any danger. But hey, here's a twist. Z-Bad's minion decides to betray Z-Bad for some reason. But Z-Bad don't crack. No! It turns out the third diamond was inside this minion the whole time. Why? Well, say it with me. I, I don't, don't know! know. Welcome to I don't know what's going on. No one knows except I do knows. Let's rewind back to the beginning of this film where Dougal bumps the car. 
Did you see it? That minion came from there and guards the roundabout. I know some movies have their foreshadowing be really on the nose and so focus on, but this movie, if you blink, you'll miss a necessary detail. Now, back to the present. Both the heroes and villains meet back at the roundabout, where Zbat collects all the diamonds and attempts to kill the heroes. Yippee Kaye, Mr. Falcon. Wait, that really was just some regular ice that could have been melted or smashed by conventional means. So, the whole time, her singing could in fact crack that ice. Fire could have melted it. It wasn't a magical ice barrier. It was just regular ice that could have been cracked by her singing. The entire reason, the motivation this dog went out on this mission was a problem that could have been solved literally in the first 10 minutes of this movie. Wow. Fucking wow. If this 2000s movie hired any early 2000s rappers for this soundtrack, it should have been Bow Wow. Incredible. And that's the end of the movie. The day is saved and everything returns back to normal. Does Dougal learn not to steal and lie for candy? No, he learns nothing. There was no character development, there were no characters, there's nothing in this movie. No setup? I don't know who the fuck these people are. Who the fuck's that? Why is this wizard here? Why is there two wizards? Nobody knows. No one understands this movie. What the fuck is this? Like, do you understand why I was so baffled? After I saw this movie, I just had to shower for 20 minutes and think, how did something like this make it to theaters? It's just a mess. The film is beautiful. The animation is beautiful. The sequences, the action sequences are very exciting. And um, the characters are really well made and they're really likable. <sighs> I try to get a little more info on this movie only to discover the official website. It looks like it was designed in the 90s, but the movie came out 2005 in Europe. I decided to click on the trailer expecting a quick time video to load, but to my surprise, it's a YouTube embed of the trailer that was uploaded in 2011. Some company in 2011 cared enough about Dougal to update the fucking website. Why? Oops, I just tooted. Now, how does the original European version, the magical roundabout, compare? Well, I had some trouble tracking it down since nothing I owned played European DVDs, and my special websites didn't have it for download, so I had to watch it bootleg on YouTube, zoomed in with a filter over the screen, slightly sped up like a freaking animal. I don't suppose anyone knows anything about martial arts? Just the basics of like kung fu, karate, judo, kendo, taekwondo, anything you can do, and tai chi. Ooh, do they call me that fried rice? Dylan, can you beat them up? Sorry, I don't believe in violence. Whoa. Whoa. Except in self-defense. Look at all dawn of the dead and everything. Anybody know karate? Uh, I train with Morpheus. I know Kung Fu, John Woo, Judo, Kendo, Taekwondo, Wu-Tang Clan, and, uh, Chai Ti. Ha! Can you teach me some of that? Dylan, can you beat them up? My name is Neo. Hey, I'm Steve. <laughs> there is no spoon. So, is the European version salvageable? Not really. You get more characterization now that they aren't just spewing references, but the overall movie is still mediocre and suffers the same issues. They don't introduce these characters to a new audience. It's strictly made for the fans. So if you're in the year 2005 and are old enough to remember characters in a cartoon from 42 years prior, you may get some enjoyment out of this. But if I had to watch one of these versions again, it'd be the American one. Hear me out, do you want an average, nothing special European movie or a horrendous American bastardization? If it's gonna suck, it better be a mess. Hang on, I thought oh. my gum came out. Oh, shucks, uh, I, I, I want this uh, to be sent to Harvey. Dougal was a moderate financial success, barely breaking even. All the actors in this film continue to have careers, except Kevin Smith, who suffered a faith worse than death. Being Kevin Smith, 
Meanwhile, the Weinsteins continue to dub over foreign cartoons nobody cares about. Their evil still reigns supreme. All right, everybody say cheesecake. I love you, Dougal. I love you too, Florence. Ha! Gay! He's the cowardly hound with a nose for trouble. The fearless warrior couldn't make it today, so we came instead. Ooh, she's the loyal friend. He'll do anything to save. Dougal, I knew you'd make it. Kylie Minogue as Florence. Robbie Williams as Dougal. The Magic Roundabout. <laughs>